This is the new Audi S8, and it's a little bit like an F35 Lightning stealth fighter because it's got plenty of firepower, yet it manages to fly under the radar. Now, Audi has just updated the S8 and the normal A8 as part of a midlife facelift. I'm gonna talk you through all the upgrades. Also gonna talk you through the exterior, the interior. I'm gonna test out the car's practicality. I'm gonna do all the usual reviewing stuff, such as drive it and launch it to see how quick it is from zero to 60 miles an hour. And seeing, as I'm in Germany, I'm gonna take this thing on the Autobahn and see what kind of top speed I can get out of it. Because I'm Matt Watson, and you're watching CarWow. Buying a new car? Then head to CarWow, and my team will help you find your next car at a fair price. CarWow, your one-stop car buying comparison site. Let's start this video by talking about the design. So, as part of the revisions, Audi has given the car some new tail lights. They now feature OLED technology, and they have different graphics in them, depending on which driving mode you're in. Also, the car's a proximity sensor at the rear, so if another vehicle gets within two meters of it, then the rear lights illuminate further. Now, here's a little clip of that happening. Now, I can't show you here because it's just too bright. You won't see it. Now, as part of the revisions, there's also a redesigned rear bumper. You get some chrome trim on it now. This being the S8, you get S8 badging here and quad tailpipes. And the good news is there's no fake exhaust here, and you've got these lovely chrome surrounds. I like that. What I don't like, though, is this diffuser because that is totally fake. I mean, it looks rubbish. And actually, you put your hand underneath, it's actually hollow. So it's not going to diffuse any air. It's actually going to capture it. What's that all about? Moving down the side, hardly anything has changed, really. It doesn't really need to. It's a good looking car. You do get new alloy wheel designs. They start from 18 inches, which is too small, rising to 21s. These are on the 20s and they look pretty nice. I think you're going to need at least 20s to feel these wheel arches. Moving down the side, you can get some new paint schemes. You can now get this lovely blue on the S8. The S8 also gets sat in door mirrors there's some of the paint schemes available as well nine new ones in total including five of which are matte and everyone knows that anything that's called matte is cool you also got some new headlight designs compared to the pre-facelift version and they're a bit higher up and it's also made the grille slightly bigger i don't know how they manage that it already takes up the whole front of the car but apparently it is slightly bigger and the design within the grille is different to before and the s8 has its own unique design as well as its S8 badging there as well. There's redesigned front bumpers as well compared to the pre-facelift version. And this S-Line obviously is a bit more aggressive than the standard cars with big events and stuff like that. You can also get an S-Line version, which is like a halfway house between the normal A8 and the more aggressive looking S8 here. So prices, well, the range kicks off at 74,000 pounds, rising to 103,000 pounds for this range topping S8. Now, if you're thinking about buying or selling your car, you need to check out CarWire to make sure you're getting a good price. And to do that, you can just click on the pop-out banner up there for the link in the description below. And if you're selling your car, it's dead easy to do, actually. All you do is just upload some photos, brief description, and our dealers will bid on your car to make sure you get a good price for it. And they'll come to your house, take the car away, and put the money in your bank account. And there'll be no messing around on the price. They'll pay you what was originally agreed. It's dead easy. If you want to do that at a later date, just simply Google Wow Me Car Wow, and we'll wow you. Here on the inside, there are only two changes for this facelifted A8. The first is that instead of using Alcantara here and here, it's now Damica, which is another man-made material. Now, it says it's used that because it's lighter, but I think it's lighter on its pocket because it's cheaper. Another change is that the S8 now has a three-spoke instead of a four-spoke steering wheel. However, I can see one, two, three, and four spokes. Can Audi not count? They're just saying that is one spoke. Anyway, this is what the steering wheel used to look like. So I guess it is different. But other than that, everything is as it was before, which is not a bad thing because the inside of the A8 is lovely. It looks cool. It's minimalist. Quality is exceptional. And you've got this infotainment screen here, which is fairly easy to use. And you've got Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Then you've got your climate controls here. Not quite so easy to use, but it's all okay. And you've got a lovely digital driver's display there. However, the tech on board just doesn't feel quite as futuristic as the tech you can get in a Mercedes S-Class. And if you want to see my full in-depth video review of that car and all its crazy tech, it'll blow you away. Click on the pop-out banner up there or follow the link in the description below. Can't fault the Audi's comfort though. The seats are lovely. These are the upgraded sports seats. Look, you've got the S-Low in Boston I'm very nice and yeah you've also got some decent storage here the door bins are big and some storage under here and you've got your wireless charging there you've got your USB-C ports there you've got some cup holders here as well all very lovely all very similar to it was before but that is not an issue that's not an issue at all here in the back seats of the A8, there's plenty of room so look good headroom good knee room plenty of luxuries like blinds and a control panel you've also got seat controls 
Ooh, USB charging there, USB-C, and a wireless charging pad. Plus, look, check this out. Oh, some cup holders. There is some through loading there as well. And I love how this goes back, look. Oh, it's damped. Oh, so satisfying that is. Underneath here, you have some 12 volt sockets. And if you need to, you can carry three people in the back at once with this car, look. Though it's not that great because this big transmission tunnel, which means you have to go with legs akimbo, which isn't very dignified. Now you can get this car with a rear infotainment package so you can get some removable screens that attach to the front seat backs and you can actually mirror your phone screen onto them so you can just do your work or if you want you can stream netflix or youtube or whatever on there now the seats on this car look at this they have a recline function oh let's get more comfortable oh this is good this is good this is good Wait a minute, this is not so good because now knee room, oh dear. This is not as relaxing as I'd hoped. Still, if you want to carry rear passengers a lot, say if you're a chauffeur, you're going to want the long wheelbase version of this car because it has about that much more rear knee room. In fact, you can recline the back seats even more than in this car so you can get into your ideal position. Actually, what's your ideal position? I oh, forget that. <laughs> Don't put that in, just cut that out, it's weird. Now let's check out the boot, which is big enough. However, BMW 7 Series boot capacity, 515 litres. Mercedes S-Class, 555 litres. Still is a nice square shape. There's not too much of a lip to lift things over. And you do have this scuff plate here so that you don't scratch your paintwork if you're dragging things out of it. And there's various tie down points which feel secure and solid. You can get nets and little storage area there. Some underfloor storage here as well, and there's your tow repair kit. Thing is, though, if you want to carry some big long items, you can't actually fold down the rear seats at all. And that brings us to five or nine things about the new Audi A8. This shiny bit of trim on the dash does look cool, but it's so reflective that when you're driving along past anything such as buildings or trees, then you basically get them projected here on the dash. It's almost like you're watching a movie and it catches your eye and distracts you when you're trying to concentrate on the road. Ah. Wouldn't it be lovely if before petrol cars are banned, you were able to enjoy the full noise of something like this S8 VA engine, but oh no, Audi stops the fun. For instance, rev up the engine, go on. Yeah, soft limiters. I hate them. In the prefacing version of the A8, this control panel, which allows you to operate the rear seat, the infotainment system, all that kind of thing, used to be removable. A little tablet, really cool, press a button, it comes out, you can operate it in your hand, then put it back. But now, it's fixed. They, they just don't let you do that. Why not? The S8 comes as standard with special predictive suspension. So a camera reads the road ahead, it can see bumps, and the suspension automatically lifts up the wheels when you go over them, so the car remains completely flat. It doesn't go like that. Really cool. However, you can't get that feature at all on the standard A8 in the UK, whereas you can in other markets. Speaking of which, in the UK, you can't get the S8 with carbon ceramic brakes, like you can in other markets. Also, you can get a long wheelbase version of the S8 in China and America, but not the UK. Why is it that in the UK we can't get all of the options and enjoyment from the vehicle, huh? What, what, what is it about us, eh? Is it Brexit? Please forgive us. This glove box may seem quite large. However, this disk drive unit does eat into the space and it affects exactly what you can put in there. Oh, so annoying. However, it's not all bad. Here's five cool things about this revised Audi A8. You can get the long wheelbase version of the Audi A8 with an electrically deployable footrest for the rear passenger, which also massages your calves and heats your legs. Now this is a short wheelbase version of the car, so it doesn't get that. So if I want to experience something similar, I'd probably have to do that with the um, seat back pocket, and then, I don't know, massage my calves myself and heat my feet. <sighs> Yeah, it's not quite the same. You can get the Audi A8 with rear wheel steering, which makes it more manoeuvrable than you'd imagine such a big car to be. Now it comes as standard on the S8 and the A8 four sprung, but you can get it optionally on the other models as well. Now rear wheel steering isn't something you can get on the Mercedes S-Class in the UK, so the Mercedes isn't necessarily better, is it? You've heard of matrix LED headlights, right? Well, how about matrix LED reading lights? Well, that's exactly what this yeah, it has here in the back. So you've got a selection of LEDs just up there and you can use this touchpad here to control exactly where they illuminate. So you can highlight individual words in your book. Mm. 
To make the car easier to get in and out of, when you unlock it and go to get in, watch, it raises up on its suspension. Whoop, there we go. And then obviously when you shut the door, look, you've got soft close, mm, premium. And then go to drive off, it automatically lowers again. Clever. You can now get an invisible version of the A8. Here it is, there. I'm gonna make it appear, look. Yeah, obviously it's augmented reality. You can only see it on your phone. So you can see the car's new grille there. But look, I'm gonna remove the bodywork now. And you can see this one is the plug-in hybrid because there's the V6 engine, there's the gearbox with the motor in front of it, the battery pack, 14 kilowatt hours there. At the very rear of the car gives you an electric only range of almost 60 kilometers. The combined output, 462 horsepower. So it should be fairly rapid. Now the suspension, you've got adaptive air as standard, so nice and comfy, but you can upgrade to a special system which will actually lift the car up when it approaches a bump, so it just glides over them. You can see the new Alla wheel designs there, but one of my favorite things is the light technology. So, I just explode the headlights, there we go. 1.4 million mirrors in those headlights, and it allows it to project images on the road to guide you. How cool is that? Now let's talk about the engines. So as well as the plug-in hybrid, you can just get a normal three litre V6 petrol. It has less power though, 340 horsepower, and the economy is only 31 miles per gallon compared to the 156 miles per gallon you're supposed to be able to get from the plug-in hybrid, which in reality, you'll never get close to. Now if it's real world economy, you actually want for lots of motorway miles, you want the three litre diesel. So that should be able to do 40 miles per gallon, and it's fairly nippy because it's got 286 horsepower. But if it's horsepower, you're after, you need this engine here. It's the 4-litre twin-turbo, puts out 571 horsepower and 800 newton metres of torque. Now, all A8s have quattro all-wheel drive and an 8-speed automatic gearbox. And this S8 benefits further from a rear limited slip differential. Now, that should help you put the power down when you're accelerating out of corners and in a straight line. And we'll see just how quick this car is in reality when I launch it in a bit. OK, let's see what this Audi S8 is like on the Autobahn. So what I'm going to do is actually reset the trip computer there. Come on, reset. And then I'm gonna floor it. Come on, oh, we're taking off now. It's de-restricted, it's de-restricted, up until the point it said it's not, such as now. Oh, it's 100, bugger, on the brakes. Let's try and find a bit more de-restricted, see what I can get out of this thing. And what it does to the economy when you hoof it. Oh, well, this is going on, I'm just gonna put the auto cruise on, let the car do its thing. Steer to keep me in lane, keep me a safe distance from the car in front. And, oh, what's the point of coming to Germany to drive at 100 kilometers an hour on the autobahn? It's not even that busy. This is comfy though, and quiet. It's helping my economy, look. It's improving all the time. I'm not entirely sure what that means, but the way they do litres per 100 kilometres, the lower the number, the better. Unlike miles per gallon, where the higher number is better. Look, all these guys are speeding. Look, it says 100 there. Is this like Mr. Sign? What's going on? Frustrating, this is. Oh, 130. Are you going to switch over signs, or have you lost the plot? Come on, say 130. Yes, and the cruise control has actually readjusted itself and it's now at 130. That's clever, but it's not what we're here for. I didn't fly for two hours to drive at 130 kilometers an hour, which is about 80 miles an hour. Bear with me, caller. Does the auto steer work? I'm not allowed to show you. You shouldn't be driving with your hands off the wheel, so I'll just click it. Look at that. And I'm still in lane. Now, either the car is doing its thing, or I have very magical fingers. It's a bit like a Ouija board. Look, oh, oh, it knows I want to get off. Look at that, wait a minute, it's weird. Right, let's see if we can find some faster stretches of Autobahn. Finally, here comes a bit of de-restricted Autobahn, just popping up now. Yes, we've got the sign there, let's do it. Goodbye, fuel economy, hello, performance. This car is so smooth and so comfy and so planted at these speeds. It's awesome. Tell you what, I'm going to enjoy this while I can before cars are electric. Love the noise. Come on, here's a gap. If you can kindly get out of the way, my German friend. Oh, the response is good. It's amazing how this just picks up. It's got all the luxury and all the performance. Here we go. We're going to reach the speed limiter now. There we go, hit a wall at 260. Oh no, yeah, 263. That's basically 264, 265. That's the speed limiter. Way And all the brakes. We maxed it out, I hit the electronic speed limiter. We did what we came to do. Uh, 
18.8 litres per 100 kilometres during that session of heavy acceleration and high speed. What is that in miles per gallon? I have no idea. We'll show it on the screen now with a graphic. This car isn't just designed for hooning up the autobahn. It's going to be luxurious and relaxing when you're just driving around town. Now, this is a great place to try out the suspension, so I'm going to go into comfort mode. Comfort plus, oh yeah, beyond comfort. And see if I can seek out some imperfections in the road, of which there are not many in Germany. Their roads are better than ours. Let's go back the other way. Steering's nice and light. This car's quite manoeuvrable. Ah, come on. I want to try out these special systems. Oh, there's a manhole cover. I'm going to just go on the wrong side of the road for a second to try that out. Oh, yeah, I hardly feel that. Here's another one. Oh, let's try Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> I'm doing exactly the opposite of what most people do when they're driving, but this is all in the name of car testing. I'm trying to do it while not knocking down cyclists, but oh my gosh, the suspension is so good. Gearbox. I don't even know it's got a gearbox. It could be an electric car. It's so smooth. Don't notice any changing in gear. Pure relaxation. There's another one. I've got to do it again without hitting the cyclist. Sorry. Car testing. Oh, what's that? Oh, wow. Right, I want to go see that. Let's turn around. Let's see what this is like for doing a U-turn. Sorry, everybody. Right, no, just try and do it. Big long car, this, right? But because this S8 has rear wheel steering as standard, the turning circle is 11.4 metres, which is pretty much the same as an Audi A3. Look at that. Three point turn, done, no problem at all. And let's have a look at these. Now you're gonna see why I want to do a U-turn because it's obviously a second-hand car outlet and they're my kind of car. Oh, look, Porsche goodness. 993, oh, I wish. 964, actually my favorite generation. 924, mm -hmm. got a 997 turbo. 968, 944. Look, a green 996. Do you have a 996 in green? Would you have a 996? Let me know in the comments below. Don't be too rude. Oh, is that a 928? Gotta love the 928. Anyway, that's enough of this nonsense. Let's get on with what we really came here for, right? S8 performance. So I'm gonna find a place to launch it. Addy says this car do 0 to 60 in 3.8 seconds. But what's the reality? I'm gonna launch it. Let's find out. Here we go. Oh, that's good. Oh, nice gear change. 3.59 for the win. Well, there you go. That's really impressive now, isn't it? So then, what's my final verdict on the revised Audi A8? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should shortlist the A8. It really is a lovely luxury car, and it's especially lovely with this S8. Stealthy performance, flying under the radar. I hope you enjoyed the video, but what do you think of my verdict? Would you rather have this A8, a Mercedes S-Class, or a BMW 7 Series? Let me know by voting in the pinned comment. If you want to watch some more videos, click on those windows there. And if you click on that box there, you can go to CarWow to sell your car through us. Our dealers will bid on your car to make sure you get a good price for it.